Hi, I'm here at the Observatory in Los Angeles, California, and I'm getting ready to interview celebrity actor, producer, and author, Darren Dewitt Henson. He happens to be one of my very good friends, and I'm so excited to introduce him to you guys in a different way. Tune in. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good. You finally got me on the mountain. Yes, thank you so much for coming. How have oh, you been? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Been busy. I've seen your pictures on Instagram. Congratulations yeah. on the play. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Married but single. We've been busy. Sold out show, so I'm excited. Are you ready to go for a hike? I am. All right. Am. So we're going to go see the Hollywood sign. And... If we can, huh? I know. Yeah, it's kind of overcast today. But you but know we'll what? See. I'm kind of glad so that way I don't sweat out all my makeup and yeah. my hair. Yeah. Let's <laughs> you ready? Go. Let's, Let's go. go. Hey, so I know you're from the Bronx, New York. Yes. So when did you get yes. to Hollywood? <laughs> um, actually, you know, my process was really interesting because I started off as a dancer okay. who really just wanted to work with Michael Jackson. And then during that process, I became a choreographer. And, and really, I became a choreographer because I was frustrated with a lot of the other choreographers. So I was like, I want to do this myself. And oh. Michael Jackson was the target for me. You know, he was like the, the icing on the cake. And What was uh, your favorite Michael Jackson music video? Oh, hands down, the way you make me feel. It's my favorite, still <laughs> wow. to today. Those wow. are my that that is like my favorite video of all time. And during the process of of choreographing and and working with so many artists, and of course Michael Jackson and Prince, after so Michael. So you ended up working with him? Oh yeah, I worked oh. with Michael for about a year. How did you make that oh, yeah. happen? It was amazing. Actually, I was blessed um, because being at the right place at the right time. And this is a, a funny story. I was working with Montel Jordan and we were working with Eddie Murphy doing The Nutty Professor. Wow. And I was on the set uh, at Universal Studios. And during the lunch break, I went walking. And I walked, I wound up walking on to the Scream set where Janet and Michael were um, shooting Scream. And I just stood there, I knew the choreographers and I actually got to see some of the filming. And then later on, they said that he was having an audition um, for a tour and, and to do some video in Hungary. And it happened that way. Oh, my God. So I literally lucked up because I went on a journey during oh, wait. lunch. Do you think that it Michael was Jackson. luck or do you think that it was serendipitous blessings? Absolutely universal. serendipitous. I think it was universal. I think it was the law of attraction. Yeah. I think it was a desire that was in my heart that actually um, met at this you know, at this time. And, and again, because I go on these walks and just journey to discover things, um, it, it happened. So yes, it was serendipitous. And so I got to work with Michael Jackson, you know, and I was working with Eddie Murphy for Nutty wow. Professor. So it was like this a really amazing. And how old were you when this all happened? Ooh, I was I was in my late um, 20s at that time. And you know, again, with the choreography happening, and then I won the MTV Music Award for NSYNC's Bye Bye Bye. So all my dreams came true as a choreographer. Yeah. And I said, well, what now? And I just thought, well, you know, John Travolta dance, Gregory Hine dance, Gene Kelly dance. So all yeah. the dancer choreographers were also actors. I said, well, time to act. And then I moved to Los Angeles. Wow. And how old were you when you moved? And what was that moment that you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make it happen. I think I was about 29 um, when I came here. And I came here from New York with, you know, guns blazing, ready to go and let the <laughs> world know who I, who, you know, who I was and who I am. And it was, it was just a process of saying, this is what I want. This is why I want it. And I'm just going to go for it. And I never looked back. Wow. And how many years has it been since then? Uh, it's probably been about 10 years now. Wow. Yeah, it's probably been about 10, 10 11 years. So, so I'm sure you know that over 100,000 people move to Hollywood every year to make it and most go home. What tips would you give to people who are trying to make it so that they could not just stay here for six months or a year, but stay here as long as you have? Well, what I would say is ask more of yourself than anybody could ever ask of you. That way you'll always be prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a saying, to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when you are true to yourself, then that's when the magic happens, You're right? I, I can only be me. I, I'm not good at being someone else, so I can be me. And if I live in me, then I can tell my truth. And then my truth actually comes across because I believe it. And if I believe it, then people believe it. So it becomes, yeah. and it is organic. And that's yeah. what's important for me is, is for Darren to be happy.
how did you find the courage? Because I'm sure that you know there's a lot of people out there in corporate America that they're like, I want to be a comedian, I want to be an actor, I want to be a choreographer, but they just don't have what it takes to, to take that step. What would you tell them? I would say find a mentor who already does what I want to do, speak to them, learn from them, and make them your friend. Yeah. I think that's important because success leaves clues. You just have to know where to put your magnifying glass. Yeah. So that's, that's what's important to me. And I understand that. Like Jim Brown, I did a movie called The Express. And Jim and I actually Yeah, met I on, love that movie. Yeah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> Thank you. And Jim and I um, actually became friends during the Soul Food um, run. And then I wind up playing him in the Express. And I'm so glad that you like it. I'm really glad that you like it. Yeah, you know, of course. And of I love Soul films. Food. Oh, wow. And um, so for me, he became my mentor. You know, most people don't know, but he was probably the first African-American action hero in Hollywood. Wow. You know, back yeah, in the 50s and 60s. And he was, he, you know, he did this on-camera kiss with Raquel Welch <laughs> um, in a movie called 100 Rifles. Like, Jim Ground really broke ground and especially for charismatic, intelligent men of color. And that was important for me to learn from him because, you know, in a way I am him yeah. in my body. So I just really learned that I'm a product of all of those people that I learned from. so beautiful. It is. Actually, this is where I come to get a lot of inspiration when I write books. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. So congratulations on your books. Tell Thank me a you. little bit about how you get your inspiration. Tell me about your latest book. Well, my book is called Ain't That the Truth? And the tagline is acknowledge, admit, and invite truth into your life. Wow. And one of the reasons I put this particular book together was because I found that whenever I speak to my fans, you know, they ask you a lot of questions and it takes time and you're dealing with so many people at one time. And I said, look, I can't be everywhere at one time, but a book can. Yeah. So I wanted to put something together that was really inspiring um, that would assist people. Like one of the quotes in my book, it says, you know, uh, uh, hold the vision and trust the process. Now that's something powerful. If, if you hold the vision of what you desire in life and you trust the process, no matter what the process is, then again, it's about the end result and you can achieve what your desire is in your heart. So that was important for me. So it's a book of motivational quotes, thoughts, and ideas. Wow, I know that you have already been inspiring a lot of people and you're still doing it now. Who inspires you? Who has motivated you? Well, really, again, I'm, I'm a collection of, of people that I've sought after, mentors, and I'd learned. And if people were to ask me that, and you just did, then I would have to honestly say, you know, Jesus. You know, Jesus was like my best friend, you know, when I was a kid. Like, I used to read the Bible and get lost in it and just kind of literally not just read it, but find myself in a, in a, in a situation in my mind where when I was reading, it was almost like I was walking with Jesus and the disciples, right? So it was like I was there, you know, or, you know, again, Jim Brown, Michael Jackson. Um, you know, I, I love listening uh, to people who a lot of people don't talk about, like black inventors and inventions, you know, studying those people. Um, because it says to me that my history is not yet fully written. It's still work to be done. And I'm creating history as I'm living. So what I'm doing is writing my obituary now. I'm not waiting for somebody to write it. I'm going to leave the information for them to put together. So I, I want to do that. I don't want somebody to write about me. I want to be able to create my legacy and them to write about what I've done. Wow. And that's important to me. Great. So tell me now, what are five things that nobody knows about you? Whoa. That they would be interested <laughs> to find out? Um, five things that nobody knows about me. Um, I love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Mm, I like that. Um, <laughs> I secretly wish that I could train with Bruce Lee, which is kind of impossible <laughs> right now, but not really because you can study from him, right? Yeah. And learn from him. 
um, I was at the airport one day and I bent down to put my shoes back on and when I looked up, Muhammad Ali was coming through the metal detectors wow. and I, I literally bent down at his feet to help him put on his shoes wow. um, because I was so humbled just by his presence. Um, that would be three, right? <laughs> the fourth, um, I think that I want to open a school, which I've, I've never done. I want to open a school for the arts in the Bronx. And I'm a part of a, a group, um, a scholarship fund, which is the M.A. Lee Scholarship Fund that I've been a part of for 10 years. And we make sure that at least 20 people go to school, to college on scholarships. Um, so I've done that for 10 years with Dr. Maurice A. Lee. Um, I take percentage of, of my money that I earn during the year and donate it to, to the scholarship fund. And I think the fifth thing is to find a way to eat what I want to eat when I want to eat it um, and still be healthy. <laughs> In my freezer, I have chocolate Hershey's Kisses in the in the in the freezer because I love binging at like 12 o'clock at night. So well, now we know you're normal. <laughs> yes, like us. yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, right, this is Darren Dewitt Henson, and you're watching the Elvira Guzman Show. Stay tuned because there's a whole lot more. Ain't that the truth?